Welcome to video eight of our 10 part series that takes you all the way through to being a really solid user of ACDC Photo Studio Ultimate. If you've missed the other videos, this video is pretty much all about exporting and sharing. If that's not making any sense to you, go ahead and back up the truck. This image started at video six and the processing involved. So this was our, our seven layer edit suite image. And if I wanna share that with somebody, I can't share seven layers. Instagram doesn't do layers, does not care for layers at all. Other people's computers, email does not care for layers. We need to make a JPEG, right? A JPEG has to flatten this image. I don't want to flatten my image, I want to export it. So as you might expect, under file, we have export. And I'm making a video on this because there's settings here and it just gets a little confusing. Okay, destination folder. Where is it going to store this? Super important because you got to find it, right? I have two trains of thought on this. One, and I am absolutely guilty of doing this. One is that I would tend to use a specific folder and I might put it in my pictures folder and make a folder called favorites. Because if it's a, if I've done this stacked image of seven layers, I've gone to some trouble. It's probably a favorite image of mine. I might put it in my favorites folder. That said, we also know that ACDC is a database, right? We can find this image again. And so I'm of two minds. You, I will let you decide that. I am going to put it in the same as the source folder. So it's going to go back into the folder along with all of these images, but I will tag it in a way where I can recall it and find it anytime that I want. Okay, as I scroll down, file name we're going to keep the same. We might use file names when we're uh, exporting, say, a bunch of images from develop, and I sometimes do that. We could do a video on that. Format, here's the important one. Here is all the formats that we could export in. We want to for export this as a JPEG. We're going to make the pixel format automatic. No worries there. Here's an important one, the color space of the image. Yeah. I wish I could explain to you simply about what color spaces are, but in the non-simple version, let's just say there's one called Adobe RGB 1998. You'll see that one come up often. If you use Adobe RGB 1998 and you export your files, you're gonna find that your pictures come out lacking contrast and lacking color when you look on an iPhone or somebody else's computer. And that's because it's not color managed in a way that it can be understood. So what I'm suggesting to you, uh, let's say in a non-technical way, is that if you're finding your images lack contrast and color, you might be exporting Adobe RGB. We want to export as sRGB and with all these, all these numbers behind it. And what that stands for is it's a format that is a standard format for uh, uh, the web where this, if, it does, if, if the color space isn't in there, it just defaults to this and gets you correct color. We're going to do that on purpose. Resizing. This image is really, really big. Um, most, of, most of my images are when they're raw. I tend to want to be able to share it. If I want to be able to put it on Facebook, I don't need a 9,500 pixel sized image. I want to resize it. So I'm gonna resize the image. The dimensions I usually go with, I go with the short edge. Long edge, makes sense, right? Short edge. Now on a 4K television, that short edge is 2160 pixels high. If I export that, that will be optimized for a 4K display of which many of our newer uh, displays are optimized for 4K. So I just think, happen to think that's a great choice. Uh, pixel resolution, what I would suggest, and, and what I suggest to all my assistants is always put 300 in there. <laughs> and the reason is when my assistants send out images to uh, a, a client that needs an image, the number of times that they will say, oh, we needed a 300 uh, uh, DPI or pixels per inch image. 
and it made no difference whether they, they didn't look at the actual resolution of the image. They just wanted to see that number 300. So I just set it for 300 regardless, and I don't get, I don't have any arguments. <laughs> um, sorry if that sounds confusing. I just set it for 300. It makes my life way simpler. I promise you, it makes very, very little difference to you. Okay, metadata. I'm going to preserve the metadata. What, it, what was the metadata? Well. That was in this image was shot at Brentwood Bay. It was shot by me. There was my name, my website, uh, contact information. Uh, I want to preserve the database information in here. And processing, for me, none. I would never do that. And then export. This will now end up in our folder. When I go back to manage, and We'll just save our last changes just in case there was some changes on that. It, it, it basically always asks you, I, I always hit yeah, you know, yes, save, just because I don't know what may or may not have been done. And the number of times in my life that I've not hit save and regret it, <laughs> I hit save. Somewhere, look at that, a JPEG. There's our JPEG version. You can't even tell when it changed to the JPEG version. It is that good. So in here, to be able to find this, I am going to make this a five. That is how you export an image. I, I know it's a little technical, not that fun, but super important. Next up, I'm going to show you how to send that out as an email and our various ways of sharing our images. That'll be video number nine. Yeah.